me and Chad used to rap together. I don't know if y'all knew that. Yes, do it, do it. Let's pop it. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a beatboxer up here, but you know. Um, glad to see everybody here. Thank you for coming. My name is Ivan. Um, I'm a friend of Shaquille. He used to live with me in Olympia. My brother, Reg, and I all had a place together, and I grew very close with him. He, my brother, right? Everybody's brother. That's, that's the thing. Shaquille was a brother to everybody. We all loved him. And y'all yeah, packed us out. He'd be very happy. Another thing, damn, this field is nice. He'd be happy out here, too. <laughs> Thank you, South Bend High School, for letting us do this here. I'm going to go ahead and get into it and read the uh, obituary from the Daily World. <clears throat> on August 18th, 2021, Shaquille passed away unexpectedly, leaving all who knew him heartbroken. Music and rapping was a huge part of Shaquille's world that he shared with his family and friends. He also loved playing video games with his nephews and with his friends. He was an online gamer. Shaq loved playing football in his high school years and being part of the South Bend High School Championship team. I, I believe they called him the bus, am I right? No? Something like that? <sighs> Shaquille was preceded in death by his dad, Gail Wixon, his grandfather, Jim Strozak and Steve Acery, and his uncle, Sean Clearwater. He is survived by his mother, Tina Wixon, his brother, Callie Garcia, Leslie, nephews, Manny and Isaac, his brother, Styles Acery, niece, Aurora, his stepbrothers and stepsisters, Milo, 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 Alina, Rachel, Dan and Jessica, nieces and nephews, <clears throat> Dayton, Riley, Austin, Isabel, Sophia, and Judah. He's also survived by his grandmother, Carol Strozek, his aunt Mia, Marty, Sean, and Seth, and Mary Beth Clearwater and Sloan, uncles, Kevin Shipman, Elvira, and Duan, Tabitha, and several cousins. He's also survived by his father, Anthony Acery, Don, Tia, Amanda, Keegan, Brett, Terrence, Liam, Elizabeth, and Cassandra, nieces, Sanaya, and Skyla, and Aunt Cindy. Extended family include Aunt Peggy, Uncle Ron, Mickey, Christopher, Raquel, Jada, Ronnie Lee, and Ami. Shaquille had many close friends and was part of each other. Shaquille had many close friends and was a part of each one of their families. For family is not defined by blood, but by unconditional love and mutual respect for one another. He was always willing and eager to help anyone that asked or needed it. For those of you that supported Shaquille through the trials and adventures in his life, thank you. Thank you all for being a part of, of our tribe that walked with us through his journey on earth. We were so blessed by his big heart and smile that will never be forgotten. <laughs> he did have the best smile, man. I swear, you light up a room with that. <laughs> My boy Shaq, always smiling. Anything, man, he'd be cracking a joke about anything. He want us all to be happy right now. That's one thing for sure. He'd tee us here together and he'd be happy. He'd have a big ass smile on his face too. A celebration of life will be held at South Bend High School. We're here. <laughs> Arrangements are in care of Stoller's Mortuary in Raymond, Washington. You may visit www.stollersmortuary.com to leave condolences for the family. But in reality, I mean, we all family, right? And uh, coming up will be Margie Lewis, Pastor Margie Lewis. Thank you guys for letting me speak. Hello, for you who don't know me, I am Margie Lewis and my friend Tina Wixon asked me if I would come and bring a prayer. Shaquille was my friend and that might seem a little odd because there's such an age difference. But if you meet Shaquille, you're gonna be his friend because that is who Shaquille was and is and he still is my friend because when somebody moves they don't cease to be your friend he's just moved 
In my prayer today, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask for peace, the peace that passes understanding that only comes from you over this. Lord, in the days that come, be with each and every one of us. Shaquille came into our life through the thrift store and through his mom because we were in kind of a hard strait, needed a little like extra help. And in the Shaquille-like fashion, he stepped right up and said, I will help you. And he helped us and he brought, as Ivan called that, that brilliant smile with him. And each and every day was a new adventure and new joy and new fun, and that's how he became a friend. And today, where Shaquille has moved on into another room, it won't be the last time we see him when we know where he is at. Because someday, there's not gonna be one of us here that is going to be left here on this earth, we're all going to be leaving. And it's at each and every one of our choice where we get to go. And as we uh, pray the Lord's Prayer today together in unity in one accord, I'm gonna lay something to rest. You know how sometimes when we're praying the Lord's Prayer and we're in a big group and some stop the prayer and then some keep going and you're like, am I right? Am I wrong? Does it keep going? Does it not keep going? Well, I got good news for all of us. We're both right because I was studying the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 13 is the Lord's Prayer. It's the full version with the last line. In Luke 11, 1 through 4, this is where Jesus' followers said to him, they asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. So Jesus said to them, when you pray, say. And then he gave them the Lord's Prayer. So whether you say the last line or whether you don't say the last line, it's okay because they're both in God's Word. So let's gather together today in one accord with the knowledge that Shaquille Asri touched every, each and every one of our lives in so many ways. To be his mother, his father, his brothers, his cousins, aunts, uncles, teammate, friends, was a full privilege. And I don't say that lightly because he was a full and complete delight. And he still is a full and complete delight. And we're going to be able to hang out with him again. And he's gonna be able, and he's gonna tell us his stories. So I'm gonna start the Lord's Prayer. And would you please follow with me? Thank you. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And when you say that prayer, when you're on your own and you're at home, when you say that prayer, we've been taught it as children, we've been taught it and we say it as adults in these situations especially, start listening to the words because it pretty much sums up for protection over us, protection over others. And so thank you for this time together. And I'm going to pray for 
God's touch on every life that is here today. But God has a plan for each and every one of us. And if we walk out his plan, we'll have good days and bad days, but it's always a good plan. And now I'm gonna call Coach Sanchez forward because he is going to speak. And thank you for this time together. And thank you for listening. My name is Tom Sanchez. I'm, I was one of Shaquille's teachers and coaches. And, um, I've known Tina since we were about six years old. So uh, uh, there's a little bit of history there. Um, I, when she asked if we could host this here, I thought it was a perfect place. Uh, and I looked at this and I can just hear Shaq right now saying, Coach, why wasn't this here when I was playing? <laughs> I, I, I can hear him. I can hear him saying that. Uh, you know, everyone is going to speak to you know, just the effervescent nature of his personality. You know, he was he was something else. And from from the time that I first met him when he came to school at South Bend, I think he was a sixth grader when I first became aware of his existence. And he <laughs> even at that point in time, it's like. Here we go. This is going to be a fun ride. Uh, but he, he was he was something else. Everything that he did was, wasn't was for him. It was for everyone else. And he, because of that, he was just the perfect teammate. He was a big part of you know, our championship years. But, but he, he was, his goal was to make everyone else happy. And and because of that, he was a pleasure to work with. But he, he uh, and, and, you know, even as a student and, and a player of mine, that's not what I remember. I remember him popping up, knocking on the door at eight at night. Hey, coach, you know, I've got something on my mind. So he's you know, spilling his guts to me. And, and those are the things that I remember about Shaq. It was, it was just such, such an effervescent personality. And uh, he uh, he's one of those that you'll never forget. And uh, I, I'm honored to have had the opportunity to work with him, to be a part of his life. And, and if he made, if I made half the impact on him that he did on me, I'd be, I'm, I'm pretty happy. And uh, I, I just have all the, all the warm wishes to the family. Thank you all for coming to support the amazing life Shaquille Acer. Today is going to be a hard day, but I know so very grateful that we all here together. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mickey Emerson, and I've known Shaquille since the day I was born. I want to start by saying that I'm so sorry for our loss. Shaquille is not just a best friend, but a son, a brother, a grandson, a cousin, a nephew, and an uncle. He was a shoulder to cry on when things were hard, a contagious laugh when things were <laughs> great, and above anything else, an amazing person and left in a permanent impression on so many of our hearts. Shaquille has been in my life for 28 years. Knowing he is gone is so unbelievable to me. Remembering the good times carries me through. <laughs> One of my favorite memories I have is a time my parents couldn't even afford to get us a second pair of rollerblades. <laughs> so we each strapped a rollerblade on each one of our feet and rode side by side for several hours. <laughs> This is the perfect example of the type of person he was. He was always down to ride and made sure his friends got a ride regardless. He was a loyal friend. I hope when you think back on Shaquille's life, you remember his big cheesy smile, his comforting bear hugs, and the way he would crack a joke and make anyone laugh. He made an impact on everyone he touched. I know this loss is hard on everyone, but I'm glad we have each other to lean on, and I know it's really difficult. I just want to share all the memories that I have with Shaquille. Shaquille, my best friend, my family, my heart, I love you, and I can't wait till I get to see you again. P.S. People don't forget. Hello. Uh, many of you probably don't know who I am. Many of you do. Um, my name is Sean Bray. I'm married to Marty Strozik, and Shaquille is my nephew. And uh, 
I thank everybody for coming and you know celebrating this day for him. And uh, Shaquille was uh, you know unlike anyone I've ever met, and had a, a different impact on me than most people. You know, he was like a son to me. You know, he lived with Marty and myself for, you know, many times over the last five or six years. And um, I really got to really experience the being of who Shaquille was. And, you know, saw the good, bad, the ugly, the fun, the laughter, the incredible smile that he had. He was just so, you know, embracing. Um, Shaquille was one of those people that he didn't ever shake his hand. He didn't ever stick his hand out to shake your hand. You know, it was arms wide open, gonna give you a big old bear hug because that's that's what Shaq did. That was his, that was who he was. And, um, you know, it, it's really difficult to um, stand up here and talk about such an impactful person. And, but really, more than anything, I wanna share, you know, just a, a couple of stories about who he was as a, you know, as a man. Um, as he was a person and and how he impacted everyone's life you know anybody who knows Shaq knows that he had a terrible memory terrible he forgot everything he'd lose his keys he'd lose his phone he'd lose his he'd, he'd lose his shoes if he <laughs> he'd lose his shoes if you know if he didn't know what color they were you know so this you know really the last time I got to interact with Shaq was um, on on 4th of July of this year and uh, he's like, oh, Sean, he goes, I need, my car broke down. I'm up, I'm up in Kent, I need, I need your help. <laughs> I said, no problem, whatever, come on, give me, what do you need? And so he goes, well, I need to tow my car. It's, it's stuck up at a fire department up in Kent. So I said, sure, no problem, come down. He goes, he blazes down, he goes to Tony's house and you know, he gets, borrows Tony's car, drives up to my house and he goes, okay, we'll get up there, okay. So I said, okay. So we drive by the U-Haul place, we get a car dolly, we do all that whole rigmarole go up to where his car is and we're getting ready to push the car on the dolly and he pulls out his fob and he boop, boop, unlocks the doors and we back up this dolly up to his car and and, and i was like cool i said get in you know unlock the steering wheel we drive it up and he sits there and his eyes are like this big <laughs> and i look at it and it's like you know it's fourth of july so it's like 98 degrees outside this year you know so <clears throat> I said, Shaq, what's going on? He goes, didn't say a word. <laughs> he just looks at me. And I said, I said, turn the steering wheel so we can line up the tires to push it on this dolly. And he's like, Uncle Sean, I don't have the keys. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you don't have your keys. I said, you have your fob. Where are your keys? Why aren't your keys attached to the fob? Um, I couldn't find them. <laughs> I found my, I said, don't you have your, what, aren't your keys on your, no, I don't have keys on my phone. So, so we ended up, you know, we, you know, I mean, after like eight, you know, I'm not the greatest with the trailer. So backing up this dolly back and forth, we finally get logistically get it all set up and, and on the trailer and back to the home to where it could be, where it could be, where it could be on. So everything ended up working out, but that was a classic example of the, the funniness of <laughs> just his forgetfulness and and just you know, really just kind of a snapshot of who he was as a person um you know and then another one that is classic to you know um for those of you who don't know i'm i'm married to marty strozik who is his aunt um and uh we we got married uh almost 10 years ago we're, we're about a month away from our 10 year anniversary and you know this kind of goes to show um how selfless and how much he really cares about you know, he wants, he always wanted to be a hero for everyone, you know, which is a very endearing trait for people. You know, he always wanted to be able to be a helper in any fashion that he could. Um, he, he had signed up to, to bring Marty's mother, Carol, to our wedding. We had a small wedding up in, up at the Lake Quinault Lodge. And, you know, Marty and I had everything planned, got everything set up, got photographers, you know, you know, had our best friend, our best friends, Robin, Robin um, and Derek that are up in the audience here. Uh, Derek even got himself ordained to be, to be the person to marry us. And we're sitting there and we're getting ready on our wedding day, getting, you know, I'm in my, you know, getting ready, got my shirt on. I'm like, hey, Marty, where are my pants at? 
You know, I got my, got, I have my suit, you know, full on suit. You know, I got my shirt on, you know, looking kind of for my tie, whatever. Where are my pants are? She goes, I don't know where your pants are. Look for them. And I'm looking around, I'm looking around. All I have are my black Adidas, like breakaway pants with the stripes down the side. And Marty's like looking at me, you don't have your pants? I'm like, uh, I thought you brought my pants. And no, I don't have your pants. And she's like, dot, 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 dot. Hey, Shaquille's bringing my mom. Maybe we can call him and he can go to JCPenney's at the mall on South Shore and stop and get you some pants. So needless to say, he was the hero that day <laughs> and saved me from having to wear Adidas breakaway pants on my wedding day. <laughs> so he, you know, they dropped there, came in and it ended up being a, a smashing success. I mean, those of you that are on Instagram and Facebook have probably seen photos of this over the history of of how this happened and it's really just a great example of how selfless and how endearing he was to so many people that impacted his life you know i love shaquille <sighs> longer than the day is long and and i will never 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 forget the impact that he's had on my life and has inspired me to be a better person and I hope, well, I know that he has for everyone that is sitting here today. And I hope he continues to inspire you to be the person everybody really needs to be today and help us become better together. So I love you, Shaq. Miss your brother. Go Indians. <laughs> and uh, to everyone after this, uh, we're, we're, we are having a potluck together. Um, we've, uh, their South Bend School District was so gracious and kind to allow us to have the space in the cafeteria. It's over in the building over there with the, well, they did have roll-up doors, but it looks like they rolled them up now. Um, we're able to go over there and uh, sit down and um, enjoy a meal together, um, reminisce and just, enjoy the person that he was and is and you know thank you thank you for everyone i appreciate you all thank you i don't know if you guys know me but my name is ryan bomb um grew up with chuck uh prepared a little quick little speech um let me pull it up one second <clears throat> sorry this might be a little bit difficult Got you, I got you. First off, uh, just, wanted to share, just wanted to start off by saying thank you for everyone uh, who showed up to support uh, and remember my boy Shaquille um, and show love to his family and uh, during this rough times. Um, I want to give a huge uh, thanks to Tina and the family to let me uh, come up and uh, share a few words about Shaquille. Ooh. No, no, no. One second. <clears throat> All right. <sighs> All right. So, going back a few, stepping back to early childhood of uh, Shaquille, um, how did we meet? Uh, well, we met through. I, I met I met Shaquille about fourth or fifth grade. Um, he transferred, he, he re, before fourth and fifth grade, he went to Raymond High School. And then, uh, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a guy named David Lorton. Um, David Lorton transferred over schools and uh, Shaq came, Shaq, Shaq, it was a package deal, you know, like the Lortons transferred over to South Bend and uh, uh, Shaq followed. And so that's how I met Shaq. And uh, we played basketball, a lot of, uh, AAU basketball throughout our uh, um, throughout fifth grade, throughout our middle school, high school. Um, I guess here I, I gotta refer to my notes. I have I have a lot of stuff that I written down about Shaq, but I want to make sure I hit up on the important stuff. But.
fourth it all started about fourth and fifth grade um we played a lot of aau, bas AAU basketball and uh i guess the moment i realized that what kind of uh friend he would be to me was when uh we were playing paintballing at his house and uh it was a three versus one um <laughs> I think it was me, David, and Shaquille versus Styles. <laughs> and me being the new, being the newest person in paintballing, um, and having only one person to shoot at, I remember uh, Styles standing up and saying, hey, raising his hand, I'm hit, I'm hit. And man, I just got that adrenaline rush and I just kept firing after he raised his hand and uh um after after the match was over I was, and styles came up to everyone and was like hey who kept shooting me after like i raised my hand i'm out and no one said anything everybody everybody denied it but then styles was pretty certain that he was looking for an answer like who somebody kept shooting me and eventually Shaq was like, all right, I did it, I did it. Um, so after that moment, I was like, man, this guy will always have my back. Like, I even told him after like, I don't know, maybe a couple years later, uh, that incident, I was like, yeah, Shaq, that was me uh, shooting styles, but thank you for uh, getting my back on that one. <laughs> But uh, no, th throughout high school, um, we had a very, very close group of friends. Um, some would call it, I, I guess some would call it that we were known as the dream team. Uh, we were looking for, we were trying to get a state championship in basketball, but <laughs> didn't make it too far in basketball, but ended up with the state championship in football. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, he was a, he was my boy. Like I loved him. Like I remember in high school, uh, during the summer days, he would come over to my house, and I wouldn't even look out the window, but I knew by the sound of his car, um, he was coming up the driveway, and. <laughs> <laughs> it was the it was the Civic, it, or not the Civic, the CRX. Yeah, exactly. But uh, no, he would he would walk. He would. I wouldn't say he would let himself in the house and say what's up to me while I'm sitting on the couch. And I remember one time he did just that, and uh, he went straight to the kitchen while I was uh, <laughs> while I was just laying on the couch. But and I heard him rustling around in the kitchen. I was like, oh, I'm curious, what are you doing? So I got up, turned around, or I walked up to the kitchen. I was like, what are you doing? He goes, man, I'm hungry. Like, I was like, that's the chicken I'm about to eat later tonight. He goes, well, I already took a bite out of it. So, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, like, we, 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 were, we were very, very, very close. Um, what else did I want to hit? One second, I'm sorry. Gosh, I hate the, all these security settings on my uh, phone. Um, but no, I throughout high school, like I said, we all had a uh, very, very close group of friends. Um, I never had any problems with Shaquille, um, aside from like the normal scuffles. Um, like that one time I threw water at his face while he was sleeping in shop class. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, he definitely got mad at me on that one. And uh, we, we were pushing, shoving each other around and whatnot. And um, I eventually told him, I said, hey, I didn't know that there was water in that water bottle, but you can hear me now, Shaquille. Um, I definitely knew there was water in that water <laughs> bottle. And I knew what was coming afterwards. So yeah, I don't blame you for pushing me and, you know, get into a little scruffle we had <laughs> um, but Shaquille my family we we accepted him like my mom loved him my dad loved him <laughs> I remember one time um, 
my dad had asked him, I was like, hey, he was like, hey, Shaq, uh, take a bite of this uh, ice cream. Just let me know how it tastes. Without even thinking, Shaq opened his mouth and my dad fed him a scoop of whatever he had. Little did he know it was a spoonful of wasabi at the time. And instantly, like, he looked up at me. He was like, oh my God, Ryan, like, what is this crap? And I knew, I knew, <laughs> I knew what his response was when he, when I saw tears running down his face over the dinner table. I was like, yeah, Shaq, like, my dad played you. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, but it wasn't long. <laughs> I would say, like, growing up with him after graduating high school and stuff, um, I was in a phase where I was like, hey, who am I gonna, you know, like, keep in contact? Like, what, who are my real friends? And Shaq was definitely, definitely one of them. Um, I remember going to, when I, while I was in college, um, whenever I would come down and make a road trip to my mom's house down here, um, he would always call, it all started was, he, he would always, he would call me randomly and ask me if I'm going down. And like, I don't know what it was, but every time I went down, I just, like um, in my head, it, w it became natural to me that every time I went down to Raymond to go visit my mom, I would always have to make a phone call to Shaquille. And at the time, Shaquille was living in Olympia, who he was living with Ivan and Reg. Um, I don't know if you guys recall, but most of the time, like I would, I would leave Seattle about 9.30 p.m. And I would stop by his place all the time. Uh, around like 10 at night or something and leave his place by like 1 a.m. And every single time he was like, hey, why are you driving down at 12 a.m.? Like, why don't you just sleep here and stuff? You know what, I'm not gonna crash on your couch. I'm gonna go home to my mom's house and go sleep in my, you know, my own bed. And I was like, I love it. Like, I love you and thank you for the hospitality and stuff like that. But like, you know, I gotta just go home. Man, he, he was fine with it. He was like, hey, you're a big boy, you know? Like, you know, j just go. Like, I'll call you, make, just text me when you get home safe and stuff like that. So that was the kind of person he was where he was always caring about others. Um, not just me, but his family, friends, everyone else. Sometimes I even told him, I said, hey, um, you just gotta be selfish sometimes and think about yourself and not worry about others, trying to pleasing others. But man, he always did the opposite of what I always tried telling him. Like, I don't know. It was just like, I told him, I said, hey, you know, like try to figure yourself. He always called me, like during, after high school and stuff while I was in college, we always talked and on the phone. He, <laughs> funny because um we would uh he would call me randomly or i would call him randomly randomly and just say like hey what are you doing you know um and i remember a couple of times where we haven't spoken a few like we haven't spoken after a few months and he would call me and instantly you would just yell hey like whoa like my first in instinct was like why is this guy mad like i haven't spoken in him in, into like i haven't spoken with him in after a few months and stuff and for his first question after hearing like how he yelled at me hey but after here like after his his next comment was like why haven't you called me <laughs> you know stuff like that and uh man like it was great because like he was a type of friend who knew that everyone else had a bunch of, you know, growing up, everyone has their own stuff to deal with. But Shaquille never forgot, he was the type of, type of person who never forgot of the important, never forgot, never forgot of the important one, people in his life. So it was, it was refreshing to have someone, you know, um, depending on you on stuff like that.
Um, goodness sakes. Ah, man, if Shaq was here, he'd probably be, he would call me, he would call me a couple names. He'd be like, why are you, why are you being all emotional and stuff like that? <laughs> little did he know, little does he know, I got rid of that car, so. <laughs> the evil is God, yeah, exactly. But no, like, I'm still having a hard time trying to process everything. Um, when I, uh, when I first got, heard the news about Shaq, Excuse me, real quick. <clears throat> when I first heard the news about Shaq, um, <laughs> I was actually golfing at the time, and I'm not gonna put any filters on it, but I have been drinking a little bit, so I was uh, kind of under the impression of like, hey, that's not true. With Shaq, well, why is he messing around with this and stuff like that? Um, but no, uh, it didn't really, it's hard to think, to actually like fully comprehend that he's actually gone. Um, it's just, uh, he was a great friend to me. Um, one of the things I loved about him most was that we can go months, I'm talking about months without even talking and one of us would hit up, hit each other up, either via text or a phone call, and he was, and be like, "Hey, where, where you been? Like, how you been, man? Like, where you been up to?" And we would, every single time, we would not, like, it does not matter how long we would not talk to each other, but the instant that we are communicating with each other, it's like we are like. We understand that we all have, like he un he fully understood me, like, hey, I have a bunch of other crap going on. But like, when he needed me and needed any like personal advice, he was never hesitant to reach out and, you know, ask me about it. Um, I remember in college, uh, when he was actually in school as well for climbing, um, he was out partying with a couple friends and stuff like that, and I would get a random phone call throughout the night. And yeah, he was a little bit, he, got, he was a little bit intoxicated, but he was just like, hey, my motivation is to make more money than you once I'm done with school. <laughs> uh, it's funny how that turned out because after he graduated, he called me and said, I'm scared of heights, man, I can't do it. <laughs> like, and the whole time I, I've told him, I, I was like, hey, I use like, he told me he was scared of heights, but I was like, hey, th that, the only way you're gonna make more money than me is if you're gonna go, if you go climb. And I just kept trying to push him and push him like, hey, you know, like, just gotta face those fears. You know, you, a lot of, you know, like, we gotta overcome those fears to, you know, to, to push forward. Um, one of the most regretful things that i regret between our relationship is that i felt like i should have been whew, i should have been more assertive on guiding him and pushing him forward but you know i told him he was a big boy whenever he needed me i'm always here to help him But he was my dude. He was my dude. My name's Olivia Nisbet, for those of you guys that don't know me. Um, who am I? Oh, you know, just, you know, I was the girl that uh, Shaquille was whipped by, if I could say anything. 
Uh, I was Shaquille's girlfriend for about six years of his life, probably in his life for about 10 years or so, um, fully. You know, I was talking last night with Kathleen and I told her I had prepared a speech and I didn't know if I wanted to talk or not. Um, she's more of the spokesperson in the family than I am. Um, not very good at social speaking and so I shortened my, my speech and I was just gonna do a Facebook post and after I got here, um, I still have my short speech, but I just feel like I have a lot of things to say. It was just such uh, a big part of my life growing up um, and taught me a lot of things about myself and as well as him too. Um, so part of this is about him. Uh, it's about us. It's about me and him. It's about me. Um, and I just would like to read to you guys. Um, I try to think of the words I want to say to you to be able to look back and read this each year that there are so many emotions and so many memories going through through me uh, that it's hard to put into words. Um, my heart hurts knowing that you don't get to experience this life, that you don't get to see and be, you know, a baby to your daddy uh, one day. Of course, he doesn't have kids, guys, don't worry. Um, and to watch your nephews and nieces grow up to be adults and that you don't get a second chance in this world. It seems like forever ago that we had that chapter in our lives. He was a blast from my past, but he was my first love. Uh, and he was my best friend for so many years. I even made that boy wait seven months. <laughs> Before I would let him be, tell him I would be his girlfriend because for Shaquille and for Nisbet, I had to know he was a real one. Um, you know, grief, it's such a weird thing to go through with someone that you were just so close to and has died so young. Um, my best friend, Kayla, she had to remind me that I was able to give him some of the best years of his life together. <sighs> Especially just such a short time on this earth. Um, for us, together, um, for those six years, we had a lot of birthdays, a lot of parties. Um, I promised Mr. and Mrs. Sanchez it was never during our favorite seasons growing up. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Not at my house. <laughs> um, we would go and see grandma, both of our grandmas, after school um, because we didn't play spring sports. And so we would always go and play basketball after school. And we'd always go and see grandma Carol and my grandma granny because um, that was important to us to see them. Um, and we loved our nephews and nieces. I think both at a very young age, we had our nephews and nieces. She had her first son when I was about 15, uh, and Shaquille was with me during that time. Um, we also, Tino will probably, I don't know if Tino will remember this day, but we um, decided to pick up a hitchhiker and absolutely the worst town you could pick up a hitchhiker, but Aberdeen, Washington. <laughs> um, coming back from the YMCA one day, playing basketball, because that's what we did. And I was like, there's a hitchhiker right there. We should pick it up. Uh, and he listened. And so we picked up the hitchhiker. And I remember coming home afterwards to, to the apartment with Tina. And she's like, you did what? She was, she was livid at us. I don't know if you remember this, but she was absolutely about us. She was like, why did you put Olivia in that dangerous of an atmosphere to pick up a hitchhiker? And little did she know it was my idea. It was not his idea at all. <laughs> oh. He also showed me the best TV shows to watch. Um, Vampire Diaries to a T. Uh, 
you know, I, I think Shaquille is more like a Damon, and I was always into a Stefan type of thing. <laughs> Um, as well as Prison Break. You can't forget that one. He's always setting me music to listen to. That was just the love language we had. We'd send each other music back and forth. Um, and like Sean said, he's extremely forgetful. <laughs> I think every single one of the girls have probably slept in the bed with him at some point. And if he doesn't have his inhaler, he's not very happy. <laughs> Uh, cause he would always get mad at me at leaving his freaking inhaler somewhere. And I'm like, I can't do anything for you. I don't, I can't help. I'm sorry. Like all I could do is support you. You gotta find your inhaler. I don't know where it is, but he was very forgetful. Sometimes I would have to remind him about a lot of things. Um... He was a boy that actually really wanted the best for me. Um, and in the end, he had to realize that he had to let me go to find myself in this world. Uh, he was one loyal man to me because he really took what I said to heart. He always knew that the decisions that I made for us or made for him or me was the right thing to do. I mean, shoot, I wouldn't even let him have any MJ for a long, long time. Uh, and looking back, I'm so grateful for the trust that he had in me in making those decisions because I know deep down they made a difference for both of us in our lives. But he sure damn would get jealous sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because you're up here and you want to talk about all the good times, but you have to focus on the bad times too. People don't forget Shaquille. People don't forget his temper to my sensitive side sometimes. I'm gonna beat you up. Um, but with his jealousy, he was, I was surrounded by boys, but he, of course, and me, had the best squad. To Lindsay, Alicia, and Mickey, you guys truly are the best girl squad. He loved you guys like you were sisters. And Ryan, of course, you come to a good second. I love you too, man. <laughs> Um, to another time in our lives, um, Shaquille and I, <sighs> we both had um, people die that were really close to us very suddenly as well. Um, he was there for me when my granny died in a car accident. And I was there for him when his stepdad, Gil, died from a heart attack. For us, our love language, we understood in a way that no one else really did. Like my favorite movie, Love and Basketball, you forgot to be there. But for Shaquille and I, we knew to show up and be present with each other during the hard times. It was important to show up and be present Sometimes, honestly, I don't think I understood that I did need space, though. Because if you know me now, I'm pretty independent. But that's, that's the thing about Shaquille is he'd show up for you any time, any day. It didn't matter what was going on in your life, whether it was good or bad. He didn't want you to feel alone. And that's something sometimes I don't even think my family sometimes understands that when you are going through hard times, it's important to show up and be there for you. Hey guys. Got a clip. <laughs> trip, trip, tripping. Trip, trip, tripping. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to speak about Shaquille, he was just that person to people. He showed up for anybody in his life, anytime, anywhere, any who, he would show up with his friends and family, no matter what. That's what truly made him special, is just how important he made people feel loved, not forgotten, not alone. And he put a big ass smile on your face. His face would light up a room and make people laugh with all his funny bullshit.
as you guys have probably already heard, uh, our inside joke as a group is people don't forget. People don't forget how you made them feel. Uh, You know, even um, after saying our goodbyes and breaking up with Shaquille, I had to, you know, tell my sister is I uh, I shied away from love for so many years because I didn't know how I was gonna make an impact not being in his life. Uh, I just wanted to tell him he's worthy of doing anything he wants in this world, um, but that our chapter had to end and. Spent years of my life trying to find myself and being independent and being able to support myself. Um, and I don't think he really, really realized that. Because <laughs> I didn't want him to have to see me with anybody else while his heart was mending without me. He reminded me um, this week, my friend Dina, that I think of often from college. Um, her smile, laugh, and personality could light up a room, just like Shaquille. She was the kindest person I've ever met. She passed away during a car accident coming home from studio one night. Um, her and I sat together at studio and every day for the rest of the semester, I had to grieve with people from the entire design building that wanted to come to her desk. And it was pretty tough. I think Shaquille would probably remember this time because uh, it was really a hard time for me during that too. But what it reminded me of is that sometimes the good ones have to die young and it is truly hard to understand. But what my granny always said is that the good Lord takes you when it's your time. And we have to understand. Oh. Sorry. What my granny always said is that the good Lord takes you when it is your time. And we have to understand for everyone in his life that for whatever reason, it was his time to leave this earth. The last encounter I had with Shaquille was a message from a quote I had posted on social media and I thought was an important message for me to share. Invest in your energy. Invest in your environment. Your environment has direct impact on your life, so be intentional with it. Surround yourself with people who contribute to your growth and expansion. All energy is contagious. Being the typical Shaquille himself, with his little slang, <laughs> uh, he said, Ashley, not trying to holler or slide into your DMs whatsoever. I usually try and not watch your stories, but today I'm glad I did. This paragraph is exactly what I need in my life right now. Not trying to be weird, but good looks on posting this. I definitely needed that type of motivation. Hope all is well. Oh, you seem happy as heaven in your life and glad to see it. I hope I can get my shit together and be as happy as you look today. Anyways, sorry for bugging. Stay healthy. <laughs> I told him, I post to help inspire people to be better versions of themselves. 
and be positive. It is not always easy, and it's all about your built environment, who you surround yourself with, and truly how you treat yourself reflects on how you treat others and the way you feel inside. I told him um, how happy I was to be able to be his muse today and to inspire him, and I hoped happy, happy thoughts going towards his future. For someone that just really wants to make a difference in this world, that chose a career to make an impact on our built environment, I ask myself every day after work if I'm making a difference in this world. To Shaquille, from up in heaven, all of those years of having to shy away of not being in each other's lives. You sent me that message in January of 2021 that I still made a difference in your life. And I'm so grateful you looked at me as a positive impact in your life, as it helps me stay positive during this tragic loss. I pray that you know whatever you're going through during that time, you know I would have said that I would not be able to save you but I would have held your hand as a friend as you saved yourself. I love you, Anthony Shkilesri. <laughs> you used to call me an angel from above. <laughs> the saving grace. I got my angel now. Thank you. Let's see if I remember how to use one of these. A uh, long time ago, I used to work at the radio station here in Raymond. and. I was lucky I got that job for so many reasons. <laughs> it's right after my dad passed away from a heart attack. But it also meant I spent so much time with the boys who are now men. I know Styles, you are a man. <laughs> but boy, they were not men back then. This is like a long time ago. Like you remember Criss Cross, Daddy Mac said, joke, joke. That was the time. And Tina lived in town, and she, she didn't have a partner at the time, most of the time. So we would come and, yeah. So we would go and do things, all of us. Like, uh, I had Styles and Shaquille a lot after school, and we would dance to that song. Well, they would dance. I would pretend like I knew what I was doing. And uh, Shaquille, man. He was such a little cutie pie. And I was telling, even at Harborview, I told him, because it's one of my biggest memories, one of his favorite things to do, because his name, Shaquille, was after Shaquille O'Neal. He'd love to go and poke you in the knee. I'm a shack attack, I'm a shack attack, I'm a shack attack. And uh, I can hear Tina telling him that too. Yeah, you little shack attack. And he was a wild little stubborn boy, but he would mind. He was so good. Like if we went to dinner, he knew he had to be good, so we would be good. He did not ever misbehave, and but he was stubborn. Like if he, if I asked him to be quiet, he and he didn't want to, he wasn't gonna be quiet. So I put him on timeout. I think it was the longest timeout I ever gave him one time when I was at Jerry Gould's house, and um, we had been playing around, and he just wanted to act up and be Shaquille, little wild funny boy, always with a smile. He was uh, just. He always had that smile. He always had a strong spirit. And him and Styles and Callie, they really helped to keep our family close because if you have kids in the family and you spend time with them, no matter what goes on, no matter if there's any kind of stupid little argument like sisters will have, it, come on, how many girls in a room? Yeah, that's gonna happen. But always, those lovely boys were just living life and made sure we stayed close in a family. And they all took care of mom, every single one of them. Whenever, they always valued And it'd be like a kid who said, I don't want to hang out with my grandma. It was like what Olivia said, that I need to go and see grandma. It's lunchtime. I'm going to go see grandma. I'm going to have some lunch. I mean, for all of the kids when she could, mom would bake 
maybe some muffins or something, some blueberry muffins for football practice or whatever. And like the boys would know, not just the boys, like Styles, Shaquille and Callie, it would be like the boys in South Bend or Raymond, wherever they were. Here comes Shaquille's grandma, here comes Styles' grandma, here comes Callie's grandma. And Shaquille never forgot that. He always made sure. And, and that's kind of piggybacking on what everyone said. He kind of made you feel special. Like he saw you, he heard you, and he loved you. And that is a true gift that even men who live past 29 don't ever get. And he had that from this big. I'm not worried about him. No Christian did it better than he did. So he is in heaven because he already knew the importance of that. And a lot of us can live our whole life without knowing to take that love that someone gave to you, shine it back even stronger and pass it on. And my whole family, it's just like it didn't even happen. And I can't even believe he's not here. But we all felt that same way. We all felt that special. And I know I'm I'm not the only one. And I'm probably you guys feel the same way because you're here. There's got to be a reason for that. He just made you feel like you were seen and you mattered. And I wish you could see that you all thought the same. Yeah, I know he does, but I mean, I'd like him to see it like I see it. Thank you so much for loving our boy. I'm so grateful that he grew up here and so many people cared for him and he knew that. And you really helped make his life better. So thank you. You guys all know me now, but any last people that'd like to come up and speak? Otherwise, I think we'll adjourn this and head over to the cafeteria and enjoy a meal together and we'll get to enjoy some memories and uh, you know some, some good food that everybody brought for you all to share. Some of the great things that Shaq loved to eat and everybody knows Shaq loved to eat, so it's good. <laughs> all right, again, thank you everyone. <laughs>